In this video, you're going to learn how men can save their marriage by decreasing their anger and sarcasm. So the reason I'm talking about this is because men tend to struggle, husbands tend to struggle with anger. Why do we struggle with anger? Several reasons. One is growing up, anger becomes one of the socially acceptable emotions for men. And when a man is younger, they're a teenage boy or they're younger than that and they're actually a boy going through elementary, middle school, high school, it's not very popular and it's not encouraged for young men to cry, to show tenderness. And if they do show those tender emotions, often they're ridiculed or made fun of. So what do we learn as men growing up? We learn to hide our emotions. We learn to stuff our emotions. And we also learn that the only acceptable emotion is anger. So it's not surprising that a lot of husbands today struggle with anger because one of the reasons is we've been socially conditioned that that's the only acceptable emotion for men. But that gets us in trouble because then when you get married, you're married to someone who doesn't like your anger and that anger feels unsafe to them. And now they don't trust you because of your anger and they've pulled away emotionally and physically. And now you're struggling because now the marriage isn't going very well. Your wife is not open to you. There's barriers there. And one of the reasons there might be barriers is because of your anger. So the first point you want to consider is you want to have less and less to apologize for when you get flooded. Flooded is when your body goes into fight, flight, or freeze. How often do you notice when your body goes into fight, flight, or freeze? Or are you so numb to it, you don't even notice it anymore. You slip right into fight, flight, or freeze frequently. So the first step is you need to start recognizing your body, your symptoms, when you're getting flooded. Maybe you have a knot in your stomach. Maybe your heart is starting to race. Maybe you start having impulses of what you want to say. Maybe your head starts getting tingly. All sorts of things can happen physiologically when we start getting into fight, flight, or freeze. And then when that happens, we turn into a different person. We get harsh. We say things we don't mean. We get louder. We may slam a door, slam a cabinet. Who knows? But that is the side of you that's not attractive. That's the side of you that turns off your wife. That's the side of you that creates unsafety in your relationship. So this first thing you want to think about is what do I do when I get flooded? And how much am I apologizing for those behaviors? And what would it take for me to apologize less? So for example, maybe you're a yeller. When you get flooded, you start to yell. And then you ideally are going back and apologizing to your wife for yelling. But instead, what you want to do is catch it earlier so before you start yelling, you call the word flooded. And that means you're going to go take a break and you're going to go relax. You're going to lower your heart rate. You're going to do whatever it takes to calm down and get out of fight, flight, or freeze. Or maybe for some of you, you, you get really sarcastic or you get contemptuous. You roll your eyes and you say a snarky comment to your wife. And when you do that, ideally, then you have to come back and apologize because then you, you were just treating her with disrespect. So instead of doing that, say the word flooded and then take a break. Go outdoors in nature, relax, get out of fight, flight, or freeze. And then when you come back, you don't have to apologize for being snarky because you caught it before you got snarky. Or maybe for some of you, you stonewall. When you get flooded, you ignore your wife. You act like she doesn't exist. There's no eye contact. There's no communication because you're stonewalling. That's your form of punishing her. But then after you cool off, what do you have to do? Go back and you have to apologize for stonewalling. Or what you can work toward is start saying the word flooded before you stonewall and then take that break, relax, read a book, go for a jog, listen to some music, get out of fight, flight, or freeze before you start to stonewall. Then when you come back, you don't have to apologize for stonewalling because you caught it before. That's the key. You want to have less and less that you apologize for when you get flooded because you're catching yourself before you get flooded or right when you're starting to get flooded and you say the word flooded, then you take a break, relax, get out of fight, flight, or freeze, and then you come back. When you come back, that's when you need to talk about your tender underbelly because anger is a secondary emotion. So what are you feeling underneath the anger? Are you feeling hurt? Are you feeling sad? Are you feeling lonely? Are you feeling deprived? That's what you want to talk about when you come back is the tender feelings. And those are the feelings we were never taught how to share. Those are the feelings that feel scary to share. They feel vulnerable 
as men, it can feel very uncomfortable to share those tender feelings. And I recommend doing this through my tool, the mini reunite tool. You can Google it. That will help you talk through your feelings in a more tender way. The second thing I'm going to talk about here is you need to realize you are responsible for your anger, no matter what your partner is doing in the relationship. And a lot of husbands will justify their anger and say, well, of course I'm getting harsh because look how you're depriving me. We haven't had intimacy in a long time. Of course I'm going to get harsh. Or they'll justify and say, of course I'm getting contemptuous because every time I bring up what I'm feeling, you dismiss it. Or they'll say, of course I'm stonewalling because whenever I say what I need, you just ignore it. Whatever the factor is, you are responsible for your anger. Don't blame your wife on your anger because under that logic, you're never responsible for you. So instead, you want to think to yourself, no matter what my wife is doing, no matter if I'm feeling deprived, no matter if my needs are not being met, no matter if I'm feeling neglected, no matter what's happening, it's still a choice how I respond back to that. If I get harsh with my anger in response, guess what? Now I'm the villain. My wife's not going to be in the place to hear my heart because now she feels assaulted from my anger. And this was happening in my own marriage. Some of you may already know my story. When my wife and I first got married, she had a lot of sexual trauma from her upbringing. The way that presented itself in our marriage is she avoided all intimacy, all physical intimacy. And I'm the high libido partner, which most husbands are, and I would pursue intimacy and she would reject. I would pursue, she would reject. And we would go through these long periods of zero intimacy. And what that did to me, the constant rejection and the way I responded to it was with harsh anger. And I would get sarcastic and contemptuous and I would stonewall. I did all the things you're not supposed to do. And what happened is she therefore felt like I was the villain because I was responding with this harshness, this lack of sensitivity. And it made it worse because at the time I was learning to become a therapist and I thought I could solve our problems, which is a huge mistake because I was not objective. My needs were at stake. But I fell into this trap like a lot of husbands where I was responding to my wife's behavior with harshness. And then instead of her being able to look at her behavior that was causing me to feel harsh, and so I was under that misguided logic that it's her fault that I was getting harsh. If she would just be open to intimacy, I wouldn't be harsh, would I? That's a mistake. No matter how neglected I felt, it was still a choice for me to get sarcastic. It was still a choice for me to get harsh with my anger. It was still a choice for me to stonewall her. That was a choice and it was a destructive choice because then it just made a vicious cycle. She couldn't look at her issue, how she needed to grow because all she was experiencing was the assault from my anger. And once I was able to realize I'm responsible for my reaction to her, no matter what she's doing. And that's the part I need to work on. So I learned through the years, once we finally started working with some professionals and trauma therapists, I finally learned I can't be blaming her. I can't be justifying my anger because of her behavior. I need to work on how do I still be true to what I'm feeling, but express it in a constructive way. How do I share my tender underbelly of what I'm sharing instead of the harsh exterior? That's what I learned to own. That's what I can only control. And that's what I started to improve in. And when I started improving in that, now the only issue was her unresolved trauma. But again, until I could work on my side, the unresolved trauma was overlooked. She didn't think that was an issue because all she could see was my harsh anger. So are you in the same boat? Are you justifying your anger because of your wife's behavior? Stop doing that. You're responsible for your choices of how you treat her, no matter how she is treating you. And that's all you can own. And that's what you need to improve in. So those are two ways to improve your anger in order to improve your marriage. The first one is you want to work on what you do when you get flooded. Call it earlier so you have less and less to apologize for. And number two, do not justify your harsh anger because of what your partner is doing. You are responsible for you. That's all you can control. Thanks for watching. Hope you found value in the video. Be sure to leave your questions in the comments. And if you want to learn more about my ER marriage intensive on how to rebuild your marriage in 90 days, comment book a call below to set up a free consultation with a member of my team. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to watch this video next.